Hi everybody. So this is the third week of Advent and usually on the third week of Advent, stay with me, it's a little confusing. Usually we light uh, the candle for joy, but we did joy last week. And typically the joy candle is the pink candle. So this is our pink candle. But we did joy last week. This is our little joy character. And so this week we're gonna celebrate peace. But I'm going to light all three of the candles that we need. The first candle we remember that we lit was for hope. So this is my candle of hope. Last week we lit the second candle, which should have been peace, but we symbolize joy. And this week we are lighting the candle of peace. And generally our joy candle is pink, so we're gonna leave the third candle as a pink candle. But this is our candle, Advent candle of peace. Some of my candles want to go out. I might have to relight one. So I'm gonna set those there for just a second, but we might have to adjust. But this is my Advent wreath. Did any of you make your Advent wreaths like we had the instructions for the first Sunday? I hope you did for the first Sunday of Advent. So these are our Advent candles that we celebrate. So if you look, we have how many candles total? Four. So that means we only have one candle left and that's for next week. And then what happens after that? Do you know? Are you getting excited? It's the birth of baby Jesus. And I know for some of you, you're probably even more excited about Christmas coming and someone coming to visit who wears a hat and has a red coat and has some reindeer because I think Santa Claus is going to come. And we're going to talk about some reindeer food next week. But for this week, we're going to talk a little bit about peace. So do you know what peace means? If I asked you to define peace, what would you say? Well, you know, the easy answer is it means there's no conflict, like no war, no fighting. You have peace with your siblings. You're not fighting with each other. Um, harmony, tranquility, everything's good. Um, you can also use it as a greeting. You see some people going around saying peace to you, and that's a greeting. So when do you feel peace? Have you ever thought about that, when you feel the most peaceful? For me, when I feel peaceful, it's when I have calmness, when there's not a lot of chaos. For instance, when my kids have cleaned up their rooms and all the chores are done, and people aren't yelling, hey mom, can we do this? And they're not fighting. To me, that's peaceful. A true peaceful day to me is to get up and have everything organized and everything planned out and everything to go like it should. And then maybe to sneak in reading a book. So that's my peace. So during this time of year, sometimes it's really hard to find peace because there's a lot to do. And I think even at this time when it's COVID and we're supposed to be staying in, I think we still have a lot to do because I know a lot of you are doing your online school and that can be really difficult because you have to kind of um, be, be present online and still trying to get things done and you're at home and it's a little harder. So sometimes around Advent and Christmas time, it can feel like it's the opposite of peace because you have a lot more to do too. You have to decorate the house, you have to decorate the tree, you have to bake some cookies. Um, I'm going to make a gingerbread house tomorrow. You have to try to um, get cards ready maybe for fr friends and family you don't see and buy gifts. And this year we have to send gifts and we have to make sure we send them early so they get there on time. So it can all be a little overwhelming and actually not really peaceful. So I want to tell you all a story that may not give you a lot of peace it actually could be the opposite. It depends on how you feel. So there is a certain insect and it's called a bee. Is anybody scared of bees? I can be scared of bees and I keep bees. I'm a beekeeper. So, you know, sometimes bees, when they buzz by you, you get scared, especially if you're allergic. You're like, oh, don't sting me, don't sting me. And even though they're very little, they can be very intimidating. They can be scary. So, Peace and harmony are actually part of bee culture because the bees work and they do this without jealousy and competitiveness. They work as a team and they have a common goal. And that means that they have balance in their existence. 
and they keep everything running smoothly, even when there's adversity. And so there's a legend that says that bees hummed the 100th Psalm. So the 100th Psalm, um, they, they hummed it at night like a lullaby and they hum, hummed it to Jesus on the night of his birth. And in the Middle Ages, it was thought that on Christmas, the bees woke up and hummed wonderful songs of praise for Jesus, but only people who were holy enough could hear the humming. So in England, some people still believe that bees buzz lullabies on Christmas Eve. And many people, if they have beehives, will decorate them with holly, and they will even give a toast to the bees' good health. And in Germany, they will decorate the hives with holly so that when the bees come out, they could share in a Christmas celebration. So bees were said to have come from heaven. And maybe that's why in churches we use candles, kind of like ours, maybe made of beeswax. Um, bees do a lot. And they're kind of tireless. They do it all and they just keep buzzing and working and buzzing and working. And they use their time really wisely. They don't waste time. You know how sometimes you might play a video game or watch TV or just kind of do nothing? The bees don't have a lot of do nothing time. And on the day of Jesus' birth, the bees buzzed for him. It is when our lives settle into a calm buzz that we can really hear God's message. So the bees are in a hurry, but they slowed down at the birth of Jesus. So in this Advent time, I want for you to slow down a little bit. I want you to be efficient and I want you to be continuous, but don't forget to listen to the signs everywhere about what is the magic of Advent and the preparation for the birth of Jesus. So today we're going to read a story about the preparation of Jesus. And in this story, there was not peace because guess what? There was a baby crying. Is it peaceful when a baby's crying? No, no. So in this one, you know, we have our camel who we feel like probably walked, walked through the desert and took Mary to Bethlehem. And then we also have, this is going to be another one of our props for today's lesson. Because today we're going to talk about Zechariah. So this is Zechariah. So when their baby boy was just eight days old, Elizabeth and her husband, Zechariah, took the baby to the temple. It was time to give the baby a name. They chose the name John. Shh, Elizabeth said, maybe John is sleeping. You need peace, right? But Zechariah couldn't keep quiet. Even if John was sleeping, Zechariah had to share the word of God. So here's Zechariah. Hello, hello, I have something to tell you. I have something to tell you. Do you want to hear it? Do you want to hear it? He's very excited. So, Zachariah's song told about two babies, John, and can you imagine what the other baby's name was? I'll give you a hint. In a couple of weeks, the baby will be here. It was Jesus. First, Zachariah sang about Jesus. Jesus is coming. Jesus is going to bring a new beginning. Jesus will turn enemies into friends. And Jesus will give us courage to do good things. Suddenly, baby John woke up and began to fuss. Ah! I was like, all right, you've done it again. Sorry. He's so sorry. He's, he's just so full of himself today. So then Zechariah sang a song about John. You, John, will be a special friend of Jesus. You will help people get ready for Jesus by baptizing them. You will even baptize Jesus someday. And you will share the news far and wide that Jesus will come help us and care for us. Zechariah's song acted as a lullaby for his son. Soon, Jesus fell back asleep. He dreamed of days that were ahead. Shh, Elizabeth said, baby John is sleeping. It's time to take him home. So Elizabeth and Zechariah took sleeping baby John back home. Good job, Zechariah. Thanks for putting him to sleep. You're welcome. So in this story, Jesus has a play date already. Who knew? You know when you have little play groups and friends? 
So I'll show you some of the pictures from it. So this, this is uh, baby John crying. If you have siblings, you might have been crying like this one day too. And there he is happy. So a little background about where cute little baby John came from. Mary, Mary had a friend. Um, oh, actually it was a cousin. Her name's Elizabeth. And see, um, Mary and Elizabeth. So this is Elizabeth, that's Mary. And when Mary was pregnant with baby Jesus, Elizabeth was pregnant with John. And so Mary and, and Elizabeth would uh, plan about how they'd have their babies together, you know, kind of like your mom probably did with a friend or relative of hers if they were pregnant at the same time. And so they were so happy that they were gonna have, you know, little kids that would play together. And one of them knew that they were having baby Jesus, which was really important. So Mary stayed with Elizabeth for a little bit, for about three months to help get ready for their babies. And they talked about what their children might be like when they grew up one day, kind of like your parents probably did with you. And when the time came for Mary to leave, she was sad. And she told Elizabeth, she said, God be with you and your baby till we see each other again. And Elizabeth said, may God be with you and your baby, Mary. Soon it was time for Elizabeth to have a baby. And she gave birth to a baby boy, a son. Elizabeth's family and her friends were very happy for her, and God was good to Elizabeth. So that is the story of how we come to meet baby John, baby John, who will turn out to be, later in our story we'll hear, John the Baptist, and he will, um, like they said, baptize baby Jesus. So, Zechariah, if you want to look at that story, it's in the book of Zechariah. And um, he was a prophet, so you can read that in, in your in your Spark House Bible. And also, one other thing you can do, there is an activity that I have put online. I'm going to show you a picture real quick. So these are called the Eyes of God, and this is an ornament that you can make. So I'm going to show this to you. If you log on to the craft section, there's a whole. A whole section of this and it's pr pronounced Oya de Dios and so it's it was made um, in Mexico is where they started this tradition and you can make it with two popsicle sticks or you could just gather two sticks outside and you make them together you can either um, bind them together first having somebody hold them or you could even glue them together maybe use a hot glue gun which you'll need your parents help for but I have all the instructions and I even have a tutorial video that I found online. And um, I'm making some of these to put on my tree and to hang in my house. So according to this lesson uh, or this craft, it's the eyes of God. And it's really an interesting, an interesting um, craft. So it's a woven diamond shaped hanging, like I said, that originated in the Mexican Indian tribes. And today it can be used as a Christmas decoration and it carries a wish for a long life, good fortune and good health, all of what we need. And the shape of it is reminiscent of both a star and a cross. And its name may have come from the passage in Psalm 33, which reads, the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. So you just make it from everyday materials. Like I said, you can use two sticks that are of a similar size or to popsicle sticks. And what it is, is you, you use two things that are ordinary. You use just like yarn, which you can use in everyday things and sticks, and you use it to become something beautiful. It, what it reminds you of is how often do you look out into what's the everyday and you don't see the beauty of it. You don't see the beauty of nature or of relationships, maybe, the, or the shape of a tree or the pattern of a snowflake or the good things that someone in your family did for you that day or somebody that you didn't even know did for you that day. So it reminds us to enjoy the beauty of the common usual experiences in every day of our lives. So I thought maybe this would be a fun craft because it's not hard to do. You place the sticks together and then you wrap them kind of crisscross around. And so it's hard to show. I tried to do it on a video, but you couldn't see it very well because I needed the camera angle. So I've attached a link on the craft tab on the site. And so you can just go straight to that link and you can watch how they do it. It's very easy and it's lots of fun 
and it's so easy to make. And the neat thing too is you can make it different colors because you can start with one color of yarn and then tie a new color onto it and make it all different colors. You could even put some glue on it and put some like different sparkles or, or you can even weave something into the yarn and tie around on different knotted places. So I hope you enjoy that craft. There's also just a fun coloring part that you can do online if you don't want to do that and um, some other activities to relate to our lesson. So this week, what I wish for you and your family is that you have peace in this sometimes chaotic time. So let us pray. Dear Lord, in this third week of Advent, may you grant us peace and understanding that things we can control and things we cannot control are all beautiful. Please be with us as we prepare for the birth of Jesus and we prepare our own lives and be with us through the chaos and the calm. In your name we pray, amen. Everyone have a fantastic week. Get ready for your fourth week of Advent. Um, next week we're going to uh, have something that you can prep in order to get ready for Santa to come as well. So we have some, some things to do. So I'll see you then.